This week, Stogie Geeks episode 316, Drew and I review the 2019 sticks of the year. They have uh, been released, and I'm sure that we will have some commentary. Not too sure if it's going to be expert, as we are all sluggish from the Security Weekly holiday extravaganza, as we did 13 hours of filming yesterday and a party before that. And a snow day before that, and it's been a long week. Anyway, and later on in the show, Drew wants to talk about some interesting regions, and he's done a little bit of homework, so you want to stay tuned for that. And also, uh, we have some 2020 industry predictions, or what we are looking forward to in the industry, um, and our top five companies that we both get excited about, or... The ones Drew gets excited about and the ones that I get excited about and what to look out for here in 2020. We want to wish you a happy new year. Stogie Geeks episode 316 starts right now. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 316. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. I am joined by the little brown haired boy from Texas. (laughs) <laughs> My co-host Drew, who is joining us remotely via Skype or Zoom, or he's just joining us remotely. Drew, that's right. How's it going? It's going well. Texas is a little bit chilly, but uh, we're all surviving over here. Just uh, getting ready to uh, get into the full holiday swing here in this next few days, yeah, yeah. and uh, wind down hopefully uh, by the twenty seventh. Is it eighteen degrees chilly? Uh, it's uh, twenty. No, it's only thirty. Ah, yeah. And 52 during the day, so it's not too bad. We still play golf. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it yesterday was, like, cold. We have a little bit of cold snap, and then it's going to bounce back. And Christmas is weird this year, right? We we have, uh, if you're celebrating Christmas holiday, it's it's right smack in the middle of the week. Um, the of the week. So, you know, that's going to be interesting as to how that's going to work out from a business standpoint. It slows down momentum, speeds up, et cetera. Yep. I imagine it'll be a rowdy Monday till like, noon. And then it'll be ghost till maybe Friday or probably Monday this week. I, um, yeah. you know, that's just uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Unless you're in retail, it'll be probably totally rowdy, and yep. people will be kicking and screaming and punching over Christmas stuff, which I don't think is necessary uh, there. But hey, who am I, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah I want to remind the Stogie Geeks listener that you can email <laughs> all your complaints to Drew. At stogiegeeks.com. If you want to talk about cigars and stuff like that, you can always email me at joe h at stogiegeeks.com and email Drew for sure. If you want to have a dual conversation, email us both. We will hit reply all and then go uh, forth from there. You can also reach us on Facebook. Uh, follow Drew, uh, Sto- uh, Sto- uh, Stogie Geeks Drew. Throw that in your search, and uh, l- let me tell you, he posts some, some sticks of the week. I get jealous because some of the ones I, I can't have, I don't have access to, and le- and le- unless I jump online. And I'm not a big online cigar guy. I never was. I I, I really enjoy going into the cigar shop and talking to people and hearing them, you know, uh, talk about saving the world and all that stuff that happens at a cigar and or barber shop, uh, stuff like right. that. But you know. Um, so true. Well, what, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about this top twenty-five and 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 uh, yeah, l- yeah. L- uh, let's do that. I want to talk cigars. Yeah. So as they do every year in fashion, cigar aficionado, which is still the uh, probably biggest publication, at least I know from a sponsorship perspective. Or, or a hey, I want to release news. Let me email the print publication first, and then we'll 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 throw it in your email, and you can talk about it if you want to. Um, that might be an interesting 2020 prediction. I think that should change uh, yeah. anyway, which we'll talk about later on in the show. But uh, the EP Carrillo Encore. No, oh, I'm I'm on the wrong slide. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Where am I? I was like, well, as soon as I read it, I was like, yeah, that's not right. That's not right. The Agent Room, Quattro Nicaragua Mastro. Yes. I have one that I'm ready to be uh, picked up. 
uh, on Monday just because of my mm-hmm. schedule. So uh, I found one. How far did you have to travel for that one? I just had to make a couple of call, calls, and then it'll be delivered to the shop, and, and, and away it went. But, you know, I started making calls at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time this morning uh, to have that for me. So I, I have, when I spoke to you this morning, I have not had the opportunity to actually have this. Uh, yeah. I've, I've had some aging rooms. I'm not going to cast judgment on uh, anything that I've had previous, but I'm looking forward to, to smoking it. I guess I'm going to join the masses. Who are going to go into retail shops now and say, do you have this? As I uh, used to own a retail shop, I can tell you that that is usually the case uh, when Scott Fishonado launches its top 10. Uh, then it was top 10, and then it was magazine publications. It wasn't like uh, uh, on the internet as much. Because when I owned a shop, we had 56K dial-up and things were pretty slow, so we just said, the heck with it, we'll wait for the magazine. We weren't that impatient as a society. And so here we go. So yeah, so um, you've had the the experience of smoking the stick. I have. Yeah. yeah so had, can you can uh, you describe to the Stoya Geeks what the stick's all about and if you liked it or didn't like it? Yeah. No, I like the stick. Uh, I was surprised that it was a uh, number one. And I'm not saying that because there's anything wrong with it. I was just surprised it was number one uh, compared to you know the one through four. Uh, actually, yeah, the one through four that were all that, that preceded that stick. Yeah. Uh, in the in the rating uh, for this year for being uh, the number one stick of the year. Uh, yeah, definitely a full body cigar. You know, it, it's uh, uh, it is an it is uh, you know it, the one I had I believe was a pot, box press uh, fifty by fifty four, and uh, like I said, for me, I've, I've had this cigar four times this year. The last one I had was probably back in. Uh, august and uh and i remember being introduced uh this cigar by nomi uh my uh cigar lounge owner uh earlier in the year and uh he told me he goes yeah you're gonna definitely love this cigar so tried it uh liked it um so I, yeah I, you know where it's at in the number one seed you know i, I would have thought padron 1926 would have took that but here we are yeah, I mean, you know, uh, for you story geeks who are listening or watching, it's uh, Rapid Bind the Filler is all Nicaraguan. Um, it's uh, made at uh, AJ Fernandez uh, factory over there uh, in, in, in Nicaragua. It's rating it did get was a 96. Its price point is a little bit over $10, plus or minus your tax uh, there. And, you know... Uh, like I said, I'm I'm look, I'm look. It, there are very few times that the number one stick is something that I haven't had the opportunity uh, to to have. It's like, oh yeah, I've had it or whichever, and 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 I'm I'm always perplexed at what makes number one. As we spoke about uh, in last week's episode, episode three fifteen, when we were uh, t- giving a decade history of those those sticks there, and I don't know, I'm I'm. You know, uh, I can't wait to try it. Uh, I will have it by probably Monday morning. Um, as as you know, I'm not going to hold on to them. You know, I got a right. fiver coming. So it's like, okay, cool. Uh, you know, and, and, and away we go. And I'm sure I, I will report back to the Story Geeks uh, for that. I will tell the Story Geeks that uh, in our next Story Geeks episode, I found an oasis. So that never hmm. happens. Right, <laughs> wow. you know. So as a little prequel, uh, you know, uh, I I found an oasis, um, I, and and it was one of those things where I uh, was we we were working, and I like screamed in the office, Paul, you want to call? He's like, no. I'm like, are you still smoking this? He's like, y- you know, in the background, yeah. I'm like. Is this freaking cigar awesome? He's like, yeah. I figured, I'm like, are you getting it? Like, it was like we were like screaming back and forth in the office, and I was like, <laughs> damn, like I I cannot give this a bad rating. This is awesome. You know what I mean? Nice. Uh, you know, so um, excited to talk about that when when time allows for for us to move forward there. Yeah. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna report back to the listener on this stick. Um, if you were to give it a um, a story geeks rating. The number one stick, the Agent Room uh, Quattro Nic- Nicaragua Mastro. What yeah. what would you give it? Box split. 
Okay. Box blade all day long. Yeah, I mean, this, this cigar, like I said, it's a full body cigar with, with all the other cigar offerings out there. It definitely gets in the rotation. Um, I think I got one left in my humidor, but uh, uh, other than that, I mean, this this thing is is like it, it's it's got good flavor of you know some black pepper for sure, oak. Uh, it's got cocoa, and it's just it's really a, a full body cigar uh, smoker's delight. Um, but yeah, I definitely would uh, box split this with you all day long. Yeah, you know, cause I, I just wouldn't go through that whole box and. Mm. You know, in six months or how is the component whatever. like when you go straight Nicaraguan, like Nicaragua mm-hmm. binder filler wrapper? Um, I believe the cut is is super important. So yeah. in other words, if you're gonna do a guillotine flat cut or a V cut or a deep yeah. V or a bullet, now I'm a deep V bullet guy, so I would yeah. probably bullet cut this cigar. How's the tar build up at the end? Does it get harsh or is it like totally oh, smooth yeah. to the nub? No, it gets a little. It gets a little harsh. At it gets the, a little at hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So it definitely does get a little harsh there. But I mean, it's nothing that that won't leave you, you know, a bad taste in your decision. You know, you know where to put this cigar. Uh, you know, in your in your rotation. Uh, you know, I, I I've been doing a lot of deep V cuts uh, throughout the year, but lately I've been finding myself doing a lot of guillotines. Of course, I mean, if they're chisel and what have you, I, I don't, you know. I'd, Things of that nature, I kind of go with my uh, punch, you know, as much as I can uh, mm-hmm. with those. But uh, just to to uh, really concentrate the smoke intake. But other than that, uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, a deep B on this would be good. Yeah. And the one I had, and again, the one I've had, it was the uh, fifty by uh, five by fifty, uh, and they offer this in a torpedo, uh, a Toro, a Churchill. So you definitely, you know, they got four different sizes. Uh, Expressive, uh, expressive. How do you say that? Robusto. I'm yeah. sorry, Robusto. Yeah, the five by fifty to me was uh, definitely um, the better of them all. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. you know, I'll I'll report back and let you know what I think. Number two, the Padron Series 1926. Number six, Captain yeah. Obvious. Right? I we. I mean, <laughs> you know, w- w- what I say last week. Lay up. I'm going with a Padron Series something or other. I think twice. You know, because right. it's just it's just there. I was actually a little sho- uh, shocked at the number three. Yeah, so was I, because I was like, wow, you know, that that cigar, I was like, hmm, maybe in the top 15? Right. Top number two? Right. Or Interestingly three, enough, or... what, I, what, I, what I'm liking, what I'm seeing, <clears throat> is that um, traditionally, at least to me, right, here comes the hate email, right? Mm-hmm. Traditionally, to, at least to me, the online presence cigars that have started, because when, when I think of Warped, right? I think of yeah. online, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. It's like it's kind of like when I think of diesel, or when I think of, and I know it's in retail shops, so I know the email. Just calm down with the hate. Hammer and sickle, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I just think mm-hmm. of the. We were on online first, and again, I'm I'm not dogging online. I know that seems to be the case today. I just I'm a brick and mortar person, and I don't like. Peruse, peruse a lot online to, to get sticks. Uh, I was actually interesting that some of those online are starting to creep up. And I noticed that last week when we were going through, uh, burning through the decades of uh, what was the top 10 or the top mix. Yeah. yeah. A lot of those online are, are starting to creep up, which means they're probably, I would hope, in re- retail stores. But I don't know. Um I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, that I agree with you on that. I mean, that that cigar is not available here in Texas, uh, at least in the seven different lounges that I go to. I haven't seen that right. cigar uh, right. available other than on you know the uh, top uh, internet uh, right sites. And, and you got to remember, it's it's a it's a publication, so they're going to include Cuba cigars yeah. we don't have access to. Um, and you know, it's so you know, I, I don't know, like, I, like, like, how does that get in the mix? You know what I mean? Like, I know that it was reviewed, and if it got a top review, it becomes a candidate for that. But if that's still exclusively online or, or retail shop, actually, if you're a Stogie Geeks listener, and the Warped anything, so not only the Warped Siri Grand Reserve of 1988, 
eight Robusto, but the warped anything is in your cigar lounge. Just ping me and just say, hey, man, I live in this state, and, yeah, it's actually here and whatnot. Because I do know some of the smaller shops do carry a little bit of an online presence uh, within the shelf spacing as well. So, you know, uh, I'm just curious. You know, I like to look at it. You know, I know other podcasts don't like to talk about marketing and stuff like that because that's the hard stuff, right? Where you're positioned, yeah. where you're positioned in the marketplace, whether you're a cigar company or any other company, is important. But no, we like to talk about feelings, stuff like that. But I, I, I want to know, like, if it's in your brick and mortar, email me at Joe H. Stoygeeks.com. Uh, Stoy uh, I like to take a quick survey and find out if I uh, am correct in, 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 in my hunch of they're also going to include some of the online stuff. Anything you want to say about number three? Number three? No, I mean, just like I said, I, I, I was just going through some of their other offerings and uh yeah it all seems to be like stuff that you would definitely get online yeah for sure uh yeah you get like you got like urza zion you know that's another one uh you know some of the uh nomad by easy you mm -hmm. know some of those guys yeah. uh you know black label like i went on a hunt last weekend after we talked about was it black label yeah yeah and i went on a hunt last weekend and i found you know like i was i was texting you as i was on my hunt and I couldn't get anything from Black Label other than uh, some other uh, cigars that were offered by the same blender. Um, really? They weren't under the Black Label. Yeah, they yeah. weren't under the Black Label, uh, uh, you know, uh, offerings. Was it Black but, Work Studio? Or, or was uh, it was it Black Work Studio? Or no? No, I can't. I can't remember. Okay. It was like Mike. It was like Michael something. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the blenders, but yeah. So. And that was the only thing he had. Other than that, I mean, I found my Purple Rain Opus X, which I was excited about. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, you. T where was I? Sat <laughs> was that Saturday when you texted me? You were like, yeah. yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, get some. You know what I mean? Like, you know, did you end up picking yeah. them up? Oh, yeah, I picked did, them up. Did you have so. it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so cool. So I got, I got those, and I picked up some, uh, uh, the Cohiba Spectra, the 2019. So I got a couple of those in my. Uh, here we are now. So just waiting to open those up. Probably New Year's Day. There you go. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Number four was the Cohiba Robusto from Havana, yeah. Cuba. We knew that. They're, they're, they're a contender. You know what I mean? It's also oh, yeah. the most counterfeited cigar in the world. So be careful yes, for you story geeks who are out there. Uh, there. Number five, Rocky Patel ALR Second Edition Toro. Haven't had it. I got it. I have it in my humidor. Just haven't had a chance to in, uh, advent, venture that way with this. AMR. I have one thing to say about that. If Johnny can switch the camera to me. Number six, Oliva V. Lancero. Yes, <laughs> a Lancero made it. Uh, well, I love well, it. The, 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 yes, I'm excited. And the Oliva Series V Lancero is an awesome stick. And Stogie Geeks, if you go to your brick and mortar and you see those, bring cash. They will give you a discount because oh, yeah. retailers don't do uh, historically well with Lanceros. I think there's a, they're, they're missing out. These retailers are missing out on a big educational component, especially if you go to the shop and sit in a lounge. If, you, if you're cash and carry as a retail, I get it. Lanceros are not portable. By definition, I've smoked land sales on the golf course. I don't really give a care, right? But um, historically speaking, most of the cigar shop owners, if not probably 100% of them, tell me, I can't believe these land sales don't sell. Like, you know what I mean? Like next door, they got so many petite black land sales from, from Tetsuahe. Like, dude, like seriously? Nah, I want the big ring gauge. I'm like, dude, this is the stick. This is the one you want. This is the one you right. want, but they, they never go for it. So, I don't know. Uh, so, that was number six, the Oliva V Series, uh, uh, the Oliva Series V Lancero. Uh, number yeah. seven, Illusion, uh, 10th anniversary. Um, totally agree. Totally, like, like, I don't know about the number, but it, it is a good stick. Do you have that one? Are you big on Illusion over there in Texas? We are, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. 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 I was on Illusion kick. For a while, but Tatuaje still, uh, and, and for years, like, you know, I went out uh, and, and, and looked at my top 
five because for show prep for today uh, of what I said and and um, you know illusion is is uh, uh, certainly cool but for me they kind of weave in and out of like super good stuff you know what I mean yeah. for my palate I either like really really enjoy it or I'm kind of like eh it's okay you know but I go back to them a lot for sure they make some 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 good stuff um, uh, number eight Shocked at this because of the number. I thought it would be higher. Arturo Fuente, yeah. Open Sex, Reserva de Chateau. Like, really? Yeah. Like, eight? Yeah. <coughs> the, most, the most Cuban non... Uh, I'm sorry. The most non-Cuban cigar sought after is an Arturo Fuente, Open Sex, and it gets number eight. And by the way, if this was a really blind taste, taste test, you know when you're smoking like an Opus X. Right. Like, you just know it. You know what I mean? But my opinion, it's, it's our opinion. It's not expert commentary. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, number nine. The, oh, I'm going to sma- slash this name. The Tatuaje Nuv- Nuvitalis. Nueva Vitas. Nueva Vitas. Thank you. Nuva Vitas Gibro. Jero? Hirbaro. Oh, Hibaro. yeah. I got to speak. numero uno. I don't speak Spanglish. You know what I mean? You oh, live yeah. in Texas, so you're used to that. Number one. No. <laughs> this is a good stick. This is a good stick. Absolutely. Uh, you know, have you had this? You have. You must have this down there. I haven't had this one. Uh, I think I've seen it, but I haven't had it. I have to go and hunt for these. Trust me, these are on my list this Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I as I, I've, I've ran into one. Um, a story geek listener was on travel, gave me one. I smoked it. I thought it was awesome. I didn't like know what it was at the time, and then came back and said, "Oh man, crap! I should have freaking like reviewed that stick." You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, can't review it if I only had one. But yeah, that, that was the number nine. Uh, yeah, number number nine. ten. Was the uh, H. Upman 175th anniversary Churchill? Had this, yes. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Good stick. Classic. It's a yeah. classic stick, for it sure. Definitely is. Um, how do you want to handle 11 through 25? You want me to just burn through some ones that stick out in my head, or do you want any of them stick out no, in your head? No, go ahead and burn through them because I actually don't have them on my. I didn't have the time to get those on my list. You didn't. Uh, that's no. okay. That's okay. I'm gonna uh, blame that on. I'm gonna blame that on my sidekick over here. Yeah. You know, what well, you know? Uh, let me tell you something right now, Joe. Hold on. Well, what well, we can handle this right now. All right. So on the top ten, though, I will say this. You know, seven of those sticks were Nicaraguan, uh, and uh, so they take it for the decade. Uh, um. Uh. As far as the the most sticks, <coughs> Drew, check your email. Okay, uh, it might show up in your spam because I just did a link, so be careful. But yep. uh, it's me. I, I'm I'm not fishing for uh, information. You get it? Yep. Got cool. It. Yeah, that's all. There you go. Cool. So uh, you were saying? Yeah, no, I was saying seven of these sticks that uh, from one to one through ten were. Nicaraguan sticks. So you're talking about the deck being the deck being stacked mm. for Nicaraguan cigars. Yeah, um, that yeah. was surprised. Yeah. So number eleven, Espinosa Habano number four. Awesome. I said I love going to South Florida because they are full with Espinosa, mm-hmm. and I love going to Westerly, Rhode Island, because that's in the corner. And if you threw a rock, you would hit the border of Connecticut. And if you're a native Rhode Islander, it might as well be in South Florida, right? right. At Vintage Cigar Lounge, Espinosa, all day, over there. When I go there, I usually shop for, like, because they're really big on Espinosa over, mm-hmm. over Vintage. And even though it is a Rhode Island shop, it is, like, tucked in a corner. Plus, I yeah. live on the, if you were to, like, put a diagonal with the state, I am totally in the opposite corner. I'm Bristol, Rhode Island. You know what I mean? Right. So it's it's a good hour and ten minutes, even though you can drive through Rhode Island in a half hour. But the way it is, and all of that, because uh, I'm 20 minutes off the highway and they're 40 minutes off the highway, and then you have the yeah. highway. But yeah, so uh, but when I go to vintage, like I'm I'm all over Espinosa stuff, like 
absolutely nice. love it. But yeah, so the Espinosa Habano number four got eleven. Hey, be- yeah, before you get into that, so I understand you had some warheads already. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You didn't I'm get gonna, any I'm, yet. I'm gonna call Eric Espinosa <clears throat> or send him a text message and uh, let him know I haven't got my shipment. Yet. I didn't get the warhead <laughs> from 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 Eric Espinosa. He doesn't show me. He doesn't show me no love. You know what I mean? Oh. He he called. He returns your phone calls. Uh, <laughs> you know, but yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> hey, let me do the next one. Let me do the next one because the next one's one of my favorite steaks. So that's a La Flor Dominicana, the double Lajero Lancero. Yeah. Oh, dude. And it's a Lancero. Let's focus on that. It's a oh, Lancero. Man. Super cool. I'm gonna tell you right now the ratio, you know, between the wrapper and the filler in this. I mean, you have to be. I mean, this thing has to be weighed. I mean, you got to think of all the things you go into a Lancero. Yeah. It has to be weighed. The draw has to be good. I mean, the construction, everything. I mean, it has to be on point. If it isn't, it's going to miss, and it's going to be a terrible Lancero. So I I got to give it to LFD for, uh, you know, making a pretty, you know, legitimate Lancero. And I'm not saying that they don't make legitimate stuff. But, yeah, that's one hell of a Lancero. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do number 13. Yeah, go for it. For two reasons. Number 13 is actually my next stick in case I run out in the show. Not, nice. not intended. Placencia sent us some stuff. Also, if I could do some side notes. We are doing a promo on that stick. Hold on. Blah, 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 blah. In February. And so they sent us the stick for the actual promo. I'm not going to lie. Drew, I have to go shopping for more Placencias. You know why? This is the last <laughs> one of what they sent us. And I got them on Tuesday of this week. I got them on right. Tuesday of this week. So if I reviewed this stick, it's freaking awesome. And I said, you know oh. something? I'm going to burn through this this stick here. This Green Hornet by Black Label works. Banging. Right? Goes great with a Bloody, uh, a bloody Mary. But this is the Placencia Alma Del Fuego. It is awesome. I love this stick. That's my next stick anyway. Uh, it got number 13. Uh, super cool for uh, Placencia. Um, to uh, get there, I love it when he when he when he plays. And Stogie Geeks, January seventeenth, Nessus Placencia is scheduled to come on the show. So, yes. um, that's gonna be a super cool episode. Actually, we should start this now. If you have a question for Nesta Placencia, email Drew at StogieGeeks dot com or Joe H at StogieGeeks dot com. Email Drew; he's super organized with this stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Email Drew at StogieGeeks.com or both of us. We will uh, read at least three or four questions for Nessa Placencia uh, on air as well. Uh, if you want recognition, give us your first name and your state if you want to. Um, there you go. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, that would be super cool to have some 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 questions uh, over there. And I'm told there's going to be a rare appearance uh, here on Story Geeks for that day, but I don't know. I'm not I'm not counting my chickens, right? Uh, why don't you do number 14? It's Spanish, even though I know how to pronounce it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Juan Lopez, Selección number two, or mm. numero dos. Mm. So, rank 14, it is a Cuban, uh, puro Cuban cigar. Uh, 20 bucks, I guess, or actually, no, what, $26 cigar or something like that? Yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, a Cuban cigar. I, I, I haven't had this cigar at all. Uh, they offer it, in, uh, it looks like just one Vitola. So four seven eighths by 50. Uh, so I haven't had much experience with this uh, brand. Yeah. Um, I've not had that one, but I have had a uh, Juan Lopez Cuban. And mm. um, yeah, we. I can't see that far. It's it's bright here, but it's dark to where the humidor is. I was trying to see if we if if we had them. We might have them here. Um, you know, Paul Paul likes to go on some some treasure hunts as well. So um, right. if we do add that to the list, but if not, uh, I'll substitute it with something else. Your list that you're compiling for us yeah. to do the shipment. Number fifteen is the La La Aroma de Cuba Mi Amor Churchill. I like the smaller size, but. Uh, it, it's a great stick either way. Yeah. You know, great stick. Classic, classic tobacco flavor. The, you know, retro hail slow is where it's at, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. If you guillotine cut it and smoke fast, you're missing out on a lot of nuances of the stick. Yeah. You know, 
The fact that I got stick- f- 15, I think 15 still plays, you know? Yeah, yeah. And this stick has been around for a little bit, yeah? Uh, oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's been around for a little bit, so it's nothing new, but it's it's definitely – it's got staying power for sure for it to be at number 15 and be in the top 25. And as I talked to a lot of my uh, people on social media, they thought that this is one of the cigars that, that, that will break top 10 yep. in the, you know, in the next few years. So yep. yeah. number 16 punch Diablo scamp. I, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of the old school punch, the originals. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, uh-huh. But you know, it, it's one of those things like, like are we, Am I or uh, is the consumer tarnished by what was old school and then come there? It just it just seems a little lighter of a blend than some mm. of the old school punches um, there. But uh, anyway, it got number 16. Have you had one of these? I have not had one of those yet. Uh, last week I was looking for the punch de punch mm. that I keep hearing about and I just can't, I can't seem to get my hands on it. So I'm going to have to either break the berry and go through an online broker on that one or Maybe I'll get one of our people somewhere in the country. Yeah, see, that's the you thing. Know, like, like to you gotta, it, it, it's your level of patience, right? If you want to yeah. really go out there and find it through retailers, call, take a ride. I don't know. I, I've never, I've like I said, I've had, I have a couple of friends in the industry that are just treasure hunters, and they like to do all that stuff. Uh, for me, it's always, it's always been just a bandwidth of time issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. Um, you can certainly find find that stuff online, um, you know, and yeah. and who knows? You, you sometimes you, you you get a deal uh, for sure. Uh, why don't you do number seventeen? Because my number eighteen came true. Aladino, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, yeah. I like, <laughs> <laughs> so the number seventeen, Hoyo del Monterey, Hoyo de Monterey, La Hoyo de Rio Seco. Mm-hmm. So again, uh, another Cuban cigar. Uh, Excellent just, cigar. Man, this is, yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard nothing but great things about yeah. the cigar from everybody. Yep. Uh, and I've actually got two on the way mm. uh, as of yesterday. So from uh, from one of my followers on social media. So uh, we're actually doing a trade. So Nice. Nice. Yeah. So he wanted one of my Opus X Purple Rains. I'm like, okay, I'll, we'll do that. We'll do some trading. So It's a pretty good yeah. trade. Yeah. I would have better. said I would have thrown in. Something else, if if you if I were you, but yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's all good. You're I'm a nicer, give, guy, you're I'm, a nicer I'm guy than I am, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a, I'm in a giving mood, and he's got some he's got some unicorns too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's got, he's got some stuff that he said that you know he, he he's gonna go through and and uh, hit me back up on some trading, some more additional trading. So yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you know what I mean, Definitely. awesome. Uh, Alan Dino Toro mm. said it. Nailed it, right? I, was, I I knew it. I knew it. And and I think honestly, um, getting into like twenty twenty things because they change their packaging, that it's yeah. it's, it's going to be pretty uh, pretty amazing. And, and we'll we'll spend some time on that. Don't let me forget that. Like yes. not the Aladino, the packaging component, because I have a couple of examples that I wanted to reiterate for our last show of twenty nineteen here at Stogie Geeks. Nice. Um, there. So yeah. Number nineteen, uh, Enclave Broadleaf Churchill. Yeah, I, I've had this one. Yeah, I've, I've. That's just me. Um, yeah. <laughs> why don't you do? <laughs> well, I, I guess we might as well burn through the other one. So it's it's, it's, it's burn through twenty through twenty five right quick. Because I was okay. right on uh, twenty five, twenty four, twenty three, uh, twenty two, and. 21 so i'm i'm pumped <laughs> yeah my horse didn't even make it in this group at all i right? made it on other i made it on other publication groups uh sure groups but it didn't make it in the uh, cigar aficionado group so um oh well next year number 20 <laughs> go for it <laughs> number 20 la antigua ada Antuica, uh, toro la antigua dad antigua dad yep okay. toro gordo let me get some more whiskey back here there you go Toro Gordo. Toro Gordo. It's good. Hmm. My father puts it out. Um, super cool stick. It's good. It's it's. Uh, I I I I like the smaller size, but that's just me. Um, you know, classic. It's just it, it's classic tasting, for sure. So, so uh, uh, 
compared to some of the my fathers i mean these are the same uh lineage from my fathers or i think it's uh, uh, yeah, to me uh, garcia family so the garcia yeah, family yeah yeah to me yeah. it's 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 a it's a scutch down in strength does that make sense yeah i can see why too yeah. a lot of sweetness in that a lot of raisins toffee uh, yeah yeah I yeah. can see why. It just, just yeah. gets down in strength. And, 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 and believe, believe me, like the My Father line, right, is not super strong. I think it's right there in the medium component. Yeah. Again, the retro hail uh, is really where y- you really get what what that cigars, or most cigars anyway in general, are trying to accomplish uh, yeah. there. But, yeah, but it's a good stick. I'm, I, I, I would have never guessed that for – uh, top twenty-five, but yeah. um, uh, uh, definitely that factory, that farm, that line for sure. You know, you know, and the also the other thing to look, you know to look at that uh, to look at this for our story geeks listeners are, I mean, this has got a rating of a ninety-two. Yep, and we're talking about a stick that's less than ten bucks. Right. So if you're if you're ever doing that thing, well, it's it's this rating, and it's fifty bucks, or it's this rating and it's less than ten bucks. I right. mean, that kind of tells you you know a little bit of you know uh you know what what the uh price points can be mm-hmm. uh they, they don't they don't reflect the points so, <clears throat> so. yeah i think absolutely and also like if it's a fact that it's cuban it could be expensive and stuff like that too mm-hmm. yeah that's a good point good yeah. point uh hoya silver corona it's a great stick mm. i like it's it's pepper a lot of pepper uh in the front um first third and then it just you know it it settles down, doesn't settle yeah. down into anything like wow I I you know I I'd, I'd probably give it a try one you know yeah. maybe a fiver, uh there um, but it's 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 good, it's good it, it's yeah. definitely interesting um for top twenty five, yep number twenty two, uh room one one, the Foss, mm-hmm. um. I like it. I, I like I it. That. Room 101. I, I like some of their uh, stuff that came out uh, in in the super be- super beginning of Room 101 uh, there. But um, to me, it went a little lighter uh, right. than, than than some of their their, their other stuff. But uh, I like it. Uh, EP Carrillo, yes. uh, number 23, Core Plus, Maduro, Churchill, Especial, number 7. Yes. Um, it's good. Very good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, what what would you give it for a rating? Uh, I would definitely do this at a. Uh, I would do this at a box. Yep. Um I I can go through these pretty good. Yeah, uh, I've had probably six this year, so yeah, I, 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 I could definitely go through a box myself. Yep. Uh, uh, but yeah, definitely a good cigar for sure. Mm. Um, Alec Bradley nailed oh. this one. Nailed this one for top twenty-five. Alec Bradley Project Forty. Yeah, I really like this stick, and I said this on Story Geeks. The only thing that ruined this stick was the fact that I got stopped by a New York State trooper. <laughs> I remember that. I paid my ticket. I paid, but yes. when this came, this stick came out, and then when we had what was it, uh, Jonathan on the show, I was like, "Yo, even though it's all called the Experimental Series, like, is it going to be experimental?" Because I tried the stuff that came out with Alec Bradley, you know, the Gatekeeper. Uh, mm-hmm. And there was another one that came Magic out. Magic Toast. Thank you. Yeah. Magic yep. Toast. And I'm just like, dude, the Project 40 is where it's at. That's a yeah, good Project stick. 40. That is such a good stick. And I, I gave away all of my Project 40s yesterday at Paul Security Weekly, uh, his show um, there. Because some guy came and he was talking about, uh, you know, he was a security guy. And he was talking about how he smokes cigars with his father. And his father likes Connecticut's. But his father's starting to dig. His father actually asked him, like, the guy doesn't smoke cigars. He just smokes cigars with his father and hangs out. So I'm making it up once right. a month or twice a month, right? And he was like, wow. He goes, so you do the Story Geek show? I was like, yeah. And we were talking. He's like, you know, my father's been saying that Connecticut's have been getting stronger. Because his father walks into the shop and says, I'd like a Connecticut. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the shop shows him a line of Connecticut's. He buys two, one for him and one for his son. He buys a different one each time, and then him and his son smoke. And then, you know, they share their experience, father and son, and then go. And I says, yes. I says, your father knows a lot about cigars. Does he want to come on the show? (laughs) 
<laughs> I was like, if you want, because he was on Paul, he was on Paul's show, uh, yeah. talking about security. He's like, no, 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 no. I was, I was like, no, I'm just saying, like, like your father is exactly right. There is a movement that I dub on the show as as complex Connecticut's because I really think yes. that the Connecticut Shade rappers are getting more complex traction, mm-hmm. a lot of traction. Even though they've always had market share and traction, so we don't yep. need any of that, you know. But, like, because of the Nicaraguan component that they're throwing in there, they're naturally getting more complex. And he was like, oh, and I says, I have a stick for you and your dad. And, and I was like, I had two different sizes. I didn't have to, and I was like, listen, bigger one for your dad, smaller one for you. And I gave him my last two of the Project 40s. And, and, and you know, I mean, they're going to they're gonna love it. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm yeah. sure they're going to watch... Hey, Dad, did, this was the show I was on on Thursday, you know? Maybe you might get yeah. in trouble. You drink that much whiskey? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> right? But, yeah, but, you know, at least he's going to uh, have an experience. But it's amazing how someone out totally outside the industry and someone who doesn't smoke a lot, you know, he just smokes every once in a while with his dad, had that kind of that co- collective data on the Connecticut. So, uh, anyway, Alec Bradley, I'm super stoked that the Project 40 made it. Um because I've been talking about that for at least the past... Well, when did I get my ticket? October 8th. So, yeah. So, I've been talking about it at least since since October, for sure. Um, yeah. That was number 24. All right, Drew. 25. Let's do it. All right. The top 25. I'm sorry. Hold on. I lost my spot here. Where did it go? Take it away, Joe. I'm sorry. My Herrera has to leave Miami. Toro Especial. Awesome stick. It is. I'm back now. Like, awesome stick. I am a fan of the Herrera Esteli line for sure. Uh, yes. Next door, when they came in, I'm uh, September maybe. They came in maybe all, late August. Hey, we got these Herrera Esteli Miami's trying. I'm like, yo, these rock. They're awesome. Uh, it's a real good stick. I, I'd probably, I'd probably give it a, a, a box split for sure. Yeah, I do a box split on that with yep. it as well. I, I like Willie uh, Herrera when he's in when he's in it. You know, I mean, he's in it quite a bit. But yeah, I, I enjoy his sticks. Uh, the sticks that he blends, uh, you know, throughout the year or you know throughout the, the decade. So I, yeah, this stick right here, I've had uh, seven of these sticks already, and they're just delicious. Uh, yeah. With you know the amounts of cedar, the uh, the almonds, you know you definitely get you know at the, my favorite espresso. You get the espresso kick for sure. You do get an espresso, and you mm-hmm. do, and it's a slow, it's a slow moving stick too. Like from the new, from when the nuances come, you light it up, and you're like, all right, and it, it doesn't yeah. take a while to get going, but it takes a little bit, and then when it when it goes through, you're like, wow, that was a pretty good stick. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, right. it, and it always leaves me wanting. It always leaves me wanting a little bit more of a stronger flavor, but yeah, but um, it doesn't have the rating be negative. It just it just because you expect it to go that way when when yeah. you first take the inhale of smoke, and you expect it to go that way, and then it just kind of is is pretty smooth, you know. Yeah. At least yeah, that's my red, impression of the stick, you know? Yeah, on my notes here, I was looking at it right now. My notes here, they were just, you know, I was reading those. And I think the citrus, uh, you know, you get a lot of that citrus in the retro hell. So, yeah, like yourself, you know, there, you know, I was looking for a little bit more of that, you know, cedar and, and combination of uh, a spice. You know, just a, a slight spice on there. But, yeah, that citrus really takes it down a little bit. So Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a good stick. Yeah. Well, there's your top 25. Um if you're looking for them, you can go to uh, Throw Cigar Aficionado, Top 25, 2019, into your uh, searching device and uh, go forth from there. Um, yeah. I guess my only question is what were you really shocked at and what were you kind of slightly disappointed that didn't get in? <laughs> My San Latano didn't get in. That's what happened. Yeah, I, I know. I, I was like trying, and it's funny thing because like you said it pre-show, like when we were we were on the set, but we didn't go live yet, and like I was just like, I don't know, I don't know about that one. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know, and, and it's not. It just, I don't know. It just, but yeah. I don't know. Like when I look and at maybe- things, when I look at things, right? Yeah. Uh, contrary to other podcasts out there. 
uh, in, in, in cigars that don't want to talk about marketing, it's all about momentum, right? And yeah. I know it's a blind taste test and whatnot, but momentum is a huge part. And what I mean by that is that whoever the judge is, it's not like the judges have not smoked all year, right? right. I'm hoping they're highly qualified and can articulate their palates because they write about it. So cool sure. uh, there. And so with that being said, the ones that have the momentum are the ones that would stick out in their minds of if it's a blind test, right? Because your brain yeah. works that way, right? If you don't see a label on a cigar, if you don't see a label on a cigar and you smoke it blind, other than the ones that are like Captain Obvious, right? You know, yeah. uh, you're, you're like, wow, like this nuance sticks out and I like this. And the only way to get that is from whatever the person is critiquing their Rolodex of, of mental behavior, right? I mean, there's not logic. There's just logic, right? I'm not like busting science out here. I'm just saying, like, what do you think? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you yeah. were, if I were to give you cigars you've already smoked, and they were blind, chances are those are the ones that would stick out with you. Yeah, and, and you know, you you got you know, <laughs> if you read their if you read their process, you know, and how they do that, uh, it's it's. It's it's kind of baffling to the everyday cigar smoker or the three times a week cigar smoker. Like, wow, you know, you know, you know the the the, the series that it has to go through uh, for them to to come up with the rating. Uh, you know, you'll 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 see like Cigar Journal. You know, like you know, you'll see their version, and then you'll see Cigars and Spirits version. Uh, you know, as well. Uh, and they they differ somewhat, but they're they're still right there in the hunt um, within each other. But um, I, I dig on what Cigar Fish is doing um, with their rating system. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely cool. Yeah. Uh, so other than your San Latano, um, anything that really didn't that that didn't? I know I know you're heartbroken about that one. Yeah, I am. I'm still kind of hurt about that. <clears throat> but anyways, the other one I was thinking about also was the uh, – uh, let me look at my notes here real quick. Uh, I want to say it was the uh, Steve Saka. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, Sober Mesa. So Sober I, I Mesa, that, yep, yep. Yeah, Sober Mesa. I thought that would be up there. I mean, again, when you were when you were talking about the Connecticut uh, Connecticut rapper um, – you know, you know, he sticks out of my mind, you know, because he really he's really honed in on that on that uh, craft, mm -hmm. you know, with with the uh, Connecticut blend. So, so yeah, that was the other one. Yeah. Comparing last week's show notes, uh, I was I was uh, excited, obviously, that, um, uh, you know, I said a Drew would be there for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I I guess that for sure. Um Leagues and all that didn't. That's interesting. How we were talking about on the show the kind of decline from from the original ones. I don't know if it's a crop thing or whatever. Whatever. Uh, I was uh, Alan Dino. I said should get in there. They got in there. Mm -hmm. Alec Bradley should get in there. They got mm -hmm. in there. Um, Placencia something or other should get in there. Got in there. Um, I'm just. Uh, I was shocked that none of the um, like like the Avos got in there. Yeah, you know was, those new a, avos got a lot of buzz, and there's some, there's some, uh, you know, the, the, I'm surprised they didn't get in there because they're pretty, a little unique. Avo, I don't know, like when you smoke an avo, anything to me mm -hmm. on my palate, the only way I describe it to people is if you ever had like if you're into craft beer and you've had mm -hmm. like organic craft beer, there's yeah. a, a texture of freshness right and yeah. when you have an avo there's like there's like a a, a a a freshness if you will a crispness on the smoke that that's on your palate and i, I would think that that would be you pretty unique if they if they got up there uh in the rating but i don't know if they got released too late in the year for them yeah. to kind of jump with that uh there um I'm surprised that like the JC Newman like America series what well, didn't get didn't yeah. thrown in, in that mix. How um, about Monte Cristo? I mean, there's no Monte Cristo. Next there, one, right? right? The the next one, a Monte Cristo, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's very surprised that Monte Cristo. Good, great point that the Monte Cristo didn't get in there. Um, 
you know, Cohiba, we knew that's pretty much a layup. Padron's a layup. Um, you know, I, I, I would like to see some of the the uh, uh, cruxes get in there. You yeah. know what I mean? But they did a band change, um, yeah. you know, uh, from a marketing perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. Right? Uh, <laughs> they, you know, um, surprised to see some of, some of the Davidoffs. Yeah. Uh, are, 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 are not in there, you know? Because um, I said, like, you know, Davidoff something or other for sure. Um, yeah. A little bit surprised in the top 20, top 15 ish, like the Diesel, Hair of the Dog. Yeah, you know, or that whiskey row combination of yeah. some of the some of that the some of that line. Surprised that didn't get any in there. Um, the Aroa Dock, like that's an all. Aw- I I really like the 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 the, the Aroa Dock, uh, for yeah. sure. Um, you know, yeah, there, yeah, there Esteban was Carrera. No Esteban yeah, Carrera was another one that I was kind of like like uh, shocked um, uh-huh. that didn't get in there, uh, for sure. Uh, Gurkha usually plays, but you know, it been kind of quiet. Up and gun in there. We kind of pre- we predicted that. That's kind of like up there with the layup brand. So I guess from a layup brand, Hoyo de Monterey got in there. I guess for, oh, the HVCs, which are like everyone's hyping about, right? Surprised that mm-hmm. didn't play as well. But the ultimate surprise, I guess, would would be your Monte Cristo something or other. Yeah. You know, yeah, the White Series, uh, you know, yeah, any of those you would thought would have made it in. Even the Oscuro yep. series from Monte Cristo, uh, one of my favorite cigars. And every time I go to, every, I actually go to Monte Cristo and get that cigar just because you're in Monte Cristo mm-hmm. brick and mortar shop. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, um, like that AJ collaboration with the, what is it? The, uh, 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 King, uh, yeah. lo, uh, lo, uh, blah, blah, blah. long live the king. You know yes. what I mean? That's an interesting smoke. Um, you know there. So yeah, so that that's I guess the big the big one. Uh, no macadudos, right? Mm. You know. Yep. So yeah. No so but uh, and one that we were, we were way off of as well was your me uh the micarita. Micarita, yes. You know. Uh, Saka was another one. Yeah, yeah. So. Anything Saka? I mean, I was surprised. Yeah, uh, it wasn't in there. But uh, yeah, the the Hoyle Silver Corona. I mean, that for me. I mean, I, you know, that was. It's not a surprise. I just, it's just. Yeah, I didn't expect that, and and I expect that probably in the top. I would say in the top ten, not in the bottom fifteen. Yep. But uh, yeah. You know, uh, and um, you know, oh. Perdomo. Perdomo, yes. Perdomo. I expected, you know, it came out with a lot of uh, pretty decent stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, for sure. We knew EP Carrillo would, 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 would slide in there for sure. I actually uh, got I actually got some Perdomo uh, Beercraft series cigars in from uh, another one of my contacts. And so I'm, I'm digging to trying some of those with some of the craft beers uh, here in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, I got some of those, and and uh, yeah, I was surprised that yeah, you're definitely correct. And I, I guess my f- my final comment, and then we can do your final comment uh, there. My final comment would be surprised that there wasn't more Rockies in there, Rocky yeah. Patel, but surprised that it's that Rocky Patel that got in there. Yeah, you would think his anniversary stick would probably be in there then. Versus that one, the ALR, and the ALR. I mean, that came out right after the. Didn't that just come out this year after the? Uh, what do you call it? Cigar Con, whatever you call that thing. <laughs> whatever you call that thing. Yeah, I guess. So. Whatever yeah. you call it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> nah, nah. Talk about what what needs to be branded and remarketed for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it came out in 2018, actually. So I'm reading now, but uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you're right. I'm surprised that this is this is there. Okay, now we are pivoting. Oh, your your final comment. Your final comment on the top twenty five, Drew. No, it's a, it's a pretty uh, well rounded out uh, series. I mean, like I said, the Nicaraguan cigars seem to be taking the the uh, 
you know, their stack definitely in the deck. And, um, you know, definitely, uh, I, and that's what I'm, I, I, where I'm at as far as on the geek side of things. I like to, I like to, you know, there's different regions throughout these countries. So, you know, and so I'm, I'm right now, I'm dissecting, you know, what region these come from. Uh, you know, where is it growing? You know, is it growing more to the coast? Is it inland? You know, the way the, you know, the way it's ferment, you know, uh, fermented, you know, of course, the years, things of that nature. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty well, a pretty well rounded off uh, series, I think. Um, but uh, uh, that, that's my final thoughts on you're this. You're not one. excited. <laughs> like, you're not. I'm not. I'm not. You're not. Um, yeah. 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 I'm not excited. I mean, the, the you know, Padron series, I mean, that's a given. You know, uh, Fuente, uh, Tawa, uh, Tatawahe, uh, you know, but some of these other ones, I, 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 again, I don't know what, you know, what, you know, I know the process, but, you know, just, kind of leaves me uh, empty for words. Mm. <laughs> Sock is not in there. I wonder if it's politics. Mm. I'll be bold yeah. enough. To, I'll be bold enough to say that statement. Send mm. all your hate email to Drew at StoryGeeks.com on that one, right? Hey, Steve <laughs> loves me, so. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Moving on. You want to discuss some regions, and then we'll get to 2020 predictions and uh, – what our top fives are of what we're looking out for. So yeah, you you, sure, you brought yeah. up an interesting discussion on this. So take take us through this. This is yeah, all you. So the, yeah. So I was breaking down like the cigars of the year since 2004, and again I'm I'm on that I'm on this level right now where I'm just kind of just figuring out you know the regions, uh, where the tobacco's grown in their perspective countries. You know Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Cuba. Uh, Honduras, Jamaica, what have you. Uh, the list goes on. So you know, uh, you know, the cigars of the year since 2004. Since 2004 in Nicaragua, we have had they've had eight years uh, that have come in as cigars of the year. Dominican Republic has had four years, and this is to since 2004 to present. Yep. And C Cuba's had three, uh, and since 2004. Uh, this year, as I was telling Joe earlier uh, today, you know, seven of the Nicaraguan sticks are in the top ten: one Honduras, one Cuban, and one Dominican Republic. Uh, so again, I mean, there's, there's, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm just early in my, in my discoveries of regions and just trying to figure out, you know, what, you know, where these tobaccos, uh, you know, how how they come about in the fermentation process. How long it's going to go through before they get a certain profile flavor and things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, I'm deep in the woods <laughs> with that uh, with that endeavor. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that with everybody. And that way, you guys. I mean, for some of you guys that are are wanting to get more in depth uh, in this conversation, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, welcome you guys to take this journey with me. So. Right, so Drew, you had to for the ones that for the story geeks that are listening and mm -hmm. not viewing um, there, uh, you took the cigar of the year and since two thousand four, and just jotted down right quick the region of where it was from, and since yes. two thousand four, Nicaraguan so regionally specific has had yes. eight years, Dominica. Uh, uh, Dominica has had four years and Cuba has had three years. Just mm -hmm. to take that in depth, this is Drew's work, not mine. Nicaragua had 2004, 7, 8, 9, 12, 14, 15, and 19 cigars mm -hmm. of the year. Those were the, those were the years that they, did, uh, that they were number one. Number one cigars for Dominica uh, was, is, is four years uh, since 2004. It was 2005, 16, 17, and 18. Mm -hmm. And Cuba was three years since 2004, and it was 6, 10, and 13. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, interesting data. Takeaway from that. Well, well, what's your takeaway from that? No, I'm just saying interesting data because it, then it just kind of plays into, like, you know, what were the climates? What were the conditions? Mm. You know, what – you know, all these other factors uh, are going to have are going to play into this. You know, uh, you know, was the shine was the sun shining more stronger in Nicaragua that year? <laughs> versus, 
Dominican Republic. I mean, I don't, you know, again, yep. I, I, you know, that it, it invokes thought conversation uh, on a level that, you know, just really takes the geekish part of what we are doing yeah. to a, to that level. And so it, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's harmless education. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, you, you, you bring up a lot of interesting points that I could, we could honestly do a whole episode on this from my perspective, right? Yep. Here's, here's my quick kind of three minute synopsis, right? Yep. Uh, you brought up you brought up in your last little uh, couple of sentences there. You know, is it the sun shining? Is it the crop? Uh, is it the fact that Nicar Nicaraguan tobacco is tasting better? Um, mm -hmm. Great points, valid points, valid questions. Yeah. I would take it on another level and 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 add to those questions because see you in you know in business, regardless of business, you have variable factors right you know yes. we all have a job to do whatever it is right and they say okay our goal is to get 10 of this a month or a year or whatever right and then they say okay so in theory next year if we did 10 we should be able to do 14 15 and then next year we should be able to do 20 so in three years instead of the 10 we now had 20 we doubled our market share there you go i'm keeping the yeah. numbers even any industry doesn't matter what the business doesn't take into effect is, okay, number one component. What's changed over those years since there's yeah. been an influx of Nicaraguan tobacco? That's what's mm -hmm. changed? Number one change of the industry is barrier to entry to get a new cigar on the market is lowered. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in other words, in order for you to get in the game to produce your own cigar... It costs lower historically than it did in former years, okay? So if you take a 10-year span, it's it's lower. You take a two-year span, it's higher, okay? But in general, if you look at it a little bit, so if Drew and I wanted to create a stick, and if Drew and I wanted to create a Nicaraguan stick as opposed to a Dominican stick, that component is lower. Why? It's regionally specific, right? Mm. Rules of country. Cost of operations, cost of goods sold, all this business stuff, right? Okay, so that's a variable factor moving. So the barrier to entry is lower. Now, in any market, whenever the barrier to entry is lower, competition rises, right? Because yep. more people can get their skin in the game. Competition rises, but this is what happened. Competition rose at the same time as other variable factors have taken place. It's much easier to get your cigar out there now because you don't have to wait for a print publication. You have online, you have social media, you have yeah. website, you have uh, Skype, Zoom, all these tech components that add to the market that I think escalated that pop. Because if you took the Nicaraguan component of the sun and the taste and the flavor and all of that and threw that back in the 90s, I'm not quite sure it would move as fast. So you have other economics factors that add to that, right? Uh, clearly, Nicaraguan tobacco, when it comes to premium cigars, is here to stay. And I've been saying this since I've been on this show, uh, since January 2nd of 2017, since I've been on this show, and I've been saying this going on from uh, 2014, when I've had Cigar Club Radio from 2014 to 2017, that every year, Nicaraguan takes, if you were to do a pie chart of region, Nicaraguan takes a bigger, more part of that market share and in the, in, in, in the pie. That's it. Now, a lot of it, other factors, right? Governmental factors, embargo, Cuba, right? The fact mm -hmm. that Cuban factories are operating, let's talk about capacity of Cuban factories, right? Okay. They don't really, the, it, the United States is not important to Cuba. Cuba found a way to survive, whether you like their politics or not, right? Well, they found a way to survive since the 50s yeah. with, without the U.S., right? So they sell their stuff elsewhere. But yet, when it comes from a global market share, so, so there's no demand for your product if you can't get access to it. Oh, wow, there's a genius thing. And if you don't know about it, then there's no demand for your product, which brings you back to marketing and positioning every right. day, all day, 
right? Every day, all day. And if you want to talk about rapid mind the filler and the soil and it's great and it's awesome and we love your stuff and that's fine, that's fine. But all day, you have all these factors that move and in, 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 uh, some people in the industry, they have blinders on, right? If you can't get access to these cigars, be it FDA potential regulation, we get rid of a brand ambassador program, uh, we get rid of, you know, we go to social uh, media influencers as opposed to brand ambassadors. Whatever you want to do, um, you know, those are all valuable changes. And I think right now is a perfect storm. And then ultimately, let's talk about economics. It's called marginal utility. You can throw it into Google, right? You, you, it, marginal utility. You spend $10 for a product. You can mathematically calculate the amount of joy or sorrow you get for purchasing a product. For example, yeah. if you are a homeowner and you need to purchase a water heater right before Christmas, your marginal utility is low. You're yeah. pissed off that you have to buy this thing. However, same day, Jan uh, December 20th, you spend the same amount of money for a cruise that you're going to go on on a future date your marginal utility is, what do you think, greater than, less than, or equal to? Hmm. It's going to be greater than, right? Because right. it's more fun to spend $1,000, I don't know, water heater, right? Whatever it costs. It's more fun to spend X and get joy than it yeah. is to get X there. Now, this leads me to the point of the conversation without going on to a rant. I'm almost done. Um, the... Cigar smokers palate, and because of the, the barrier to entry is low, we want interesting blends as consumers, not as stogie geeks. We want them as consumers. So if you're Drew and you're Joe taking off the stogie geeks hat, it doesn't matter. You could stop the show. Show could never go on in 2020, 23rd, whatever, right? Guess right. what? Joe, Joe and Drew, outside of their stogie geeks life, as well as other consumers are still going to want something a little bit spicier, a little bit better, a little bit faster, right? Any industry, yeah. you want the upgrade, right? You never want the downgrade. And the Nicaraguan tobacco for a lot of palates has proven that it's been a perfect storm for them to escalate with all of that market share. You know, and, and I told you my story about a, 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 I was at a local brick and mortar and an out of towner just, just gave me the region to pick out. And I went into the humidor and I was like, this humidor is like 87% Nicaraguan. I didn't even realize yeah. it. Like I, I was brand, 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 <laughs> new, 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 old, 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 classic, 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 like it, love yeah. it, hate it. You know what I mean? Going through my buying criteria, right? Yeah. My marginal utility, all right, yeah. of that. And then when I had to pick him out, a Dominican cigar, I really struggled. Yeah. And it had... 90 facings in it. <laughs> so if someone says to you, pick me out a Dominican cigar, it, 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 it's a struggle. And it just tells yeah. you that we, as consumers, we want whatever version of better of for our palate is. Or, yeah. or whatever version of interesting that we want. That's all. Right. There you go. And that's yeah, and that's exactly what this that that's exactly what this topic that I was talking to you about earlier today was going to evoke is you know that that process that thought process uh, looking into it deeper and 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 having that decision factor you know yep. and again I mean I mean there's a lot of great cigars from Dominican Republic you know we know that yeah. I mean you know Arturo Fuentes is you know yeah uh, yeah you you can't go wrong there uh, but uh, yeah it's just like you know. For the last three years, Dominican Republic just had. Some, I mean, everybody was thinking, well, you know, and I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm share something with you. So I called uh, somebody in Vegas, and there's somebody there in the, one of the books has a, a betting pool. <laughs> so and and you can bet on which cigar it's gonna be the cigar of the year. It's pretty interesting. So that's how. That's how far this thing has kind of gravitated to. I mean, oh yeah. So, it was pretty interesting, so, uh, but yeah, exactly. So, and and what were the odds of the aging room? Right, it's like you know, it's betting oh. the horse. That's 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 twenty five <laughs> to one, right? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was like betting on Sea Biscuit today. <laughs> He's not right? around. Right? Yeah. Right. But I mean, you know, but that's that again, I mean, that's again just information that's out there. So Yeah, yeah. It's it it it's it's a great takeaway, Drew. And that's why I love when you come up with some of these topics and we collaborate on this and I'm like, wow, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it's super cool that that you made that observation because yeah. I've been saying it for the past five years that, that I know. And it's only going to get better. And the reason why it's going to get better is that the competition is going to increase because the barrier to entry is low. Everyone's all frightened about FDA, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, you know. We'll, we'll get to predictions on that pretty soon. And, you know, there we go. You know, I mean, you know, it's, 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 uh, that, that was a great takeaway, Drew. And I'm glad that you, you put that together with, with, with those exact dates for the listener, too. I love it when you, when, when, when you, <laughs> when, when, when you come up with, with ideas like that. Cause I, I think that's, uh, it, it, especially when you give the data to, to back it up. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. so, well, uh, and your modular utility is higher when you smoke Nicaraguan. Exactly. <laughs> either either online or not. It tells no. you. It tells, it tells you. you. Those, Regardless those of consumer, the consumer yeah. likes Nicaraguan tobacco. And the barrier yes. to entry for that is lower. And uh, therefore, you're going to have more of that uh, come out. Regardless of sun and stuff like that. Now, I wonder, like, if we got a bunch of, of blenders here yeah. from, say, we got three blenders, you know, want to, for this study. Yeah. I wonder what they would have to say because in their world, they have variable components as well. Oh, yeah. They're like, it's a great point. That year, man, crop was shitty. What are you gonna yeah. do? You know what I mean? <coughs> yeah, I, it does happen. Con- yeah, I've had that conversation with two prominent people in the industry today that are here in Texas now, and I won't say their names or anything, but yeah, I, I had an interesting conversation two weeks ago with one of them. And they were just describing to me that you know the you know their thought process, and one was in Nicaragua and the other one was in Cuba, mm-hmm. and so yeah, that's uh, that's something that you and I will have to, you know, we'll endeavor in the cool. future for cool. sure. Yeah, and they're both they're both willing to come on and discuss this. Yeah, let's do it. So let's so do it. That'll be fun for our listeners as well as us as well. So yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I think we should do that, and you, and you should get them in rotation for sure. Uh, All right. So before we get to our 2020 predictions, along with our top five each of what we get excited about, I want to remind the Stogie Geek listener, if you go to stogiegeeks.com, click on the McAuliffe logo, they are looking for brand ambassadors to bring back the brand ambassador program. You can sign up and represent your state. You have uh, certain uh, uh, questions you get to answer. You get some insider information. You get some uh, insider private Facebook group, which will allow that you to share some some interesting uh, tidbits from that. Uh, you get a chance to uh, appear on Story Geeks as an ambassador. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to travel. You can uh, join us remotely, like Drew does from Texas. Uh, we can set that up. If you've already signed up for that and you are a Stogie Geek, Geek listener, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I would like to hear from you. But if you want to become a brand ambassador here in 2020 and learn about that program, form a Caliph Cigars. You get some super cool swag. You get some super cool sticks to try. And mm-hmm. you get to uh, enter the industry and see how you do. And it, it's a great introductory program that they are bringing up. All you got to do is go to stogiegeeks.com. Click on the McAuliffe logo, fill out that quick information, and they will be in touch with you on that. Drew, I am super excited about this as we wrap up a year of Stogie Geeks. I am going to be entering my third year of Stogie Geeks. I'm still here, and I'm still swinging, and I'm excited. And you're coming along for the ride here in 2020. And we have a super cool lineup for Q1 of 2020. Uh, here at Stogie Geek, so you want to stay tuned. Make sure you jump in on uh, social media uh, to get in on that action or tune into the show as we go along. Uh, Drew, you want to do predictions yeah. or top five first? Let's do top five brands 2020. Okay. I mean, you want to you you just kind of you do one, I'll do one. No, nah, you burn through your top five okay. because cause right. it makes it easier for the listener. Okay, cool. So my top five brands, I'm going to go first, I guess. So here yeah, we go. you go my first. Top first. My top five brands for 2020. So uh, this made it into the uh, Cigar of the Year list, uh, the LFD. So uh, La Flor Dominica, uh, 
you know, I've enjoyed probably six of their different uh, facings already. Uh, they have the double Lajero, the Airbender, the Lajero Cabernet, the Oro, the Coronado, Reserva Especial, uh, Nicaragua Carajos, Carajos, and the Cabaro, Cameroon Cabernet. So, Cameroon Cabernet is awesome. Cabernet, oh yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I expect big things from them uh, this year. Uh, you know, they're going to continue on from what I've, you know, from my insight years. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Uh, Alec and Bradley is my next one. You know, again, the boys are there. Uh, I think Alan Rubin has alluded that, you know, they're, 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 uh, you know, they're, they're, the boys are more involved. Uh, they came out with three uh, sticks this last past uh, year. Uh, and I, I, I hear that there's more exciting stuff coming from them. So yes. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. And number three, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Steve Saka. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've become a I've become a, a big fan of his uh, uh, his offerings, and uh, I hear nothing but great things when I hear him talk. You know, uh, to the industry or at the industry, <laughs> as he does. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely enjoying his uh, his offerings now, and I, I can't see anything that I can't. I mean, he's got some stuff coming out that I feel that's going to be uh, my. Uh, Continuing success in what he's already done now. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, my next uh, next one is Southern Draw. Uh, so, the one I actually uh, this one I hear Southern Draw, uh, the Citrus. Uh, it's a, it's a you know it's a rapidly growing boutique uh, cigar brand. Um, so uh, they're to me again they're they're just coming out and uh, it looks like they're going to be giving us some more uh, things in the future uh, this coming up year probably after whatever it's going to be called cigar con PCA or what have you. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love how you take my stance. Of, oh yeah. Well, whatever the hell it's called. You know yeah, what I mean? I've, I, I've I talked to many people and they're like, they're still going to know. <laughs> yeah. It's always <laughs> going to be called IPCPI. I feel it's yeah. kind of like, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you try to change your name. That's like if Clorox or Kleenex changed their name, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, if Kleenex tissues were no longer called, Kleenexes, right? They were called, I don't know, dirigibidus or something like that. It just, you'd right. be like, yo, man, can you pass back Kleenex? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. Wipers. Wipers. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it just, it's just, it, it, it's, it's whatever. Again, it's not cloths. Again, yeah. branding identity. <laughs> don't focus on it, right? Because it's hard. Uh, right. You know, uh, and you had a sixth one in there. You want to squeeze in there because I, I, I know, because uh, usually if you type it out, it, it, you, you want to squeeze it in there. So, this yeah, is two's so, top six. I only have five. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, actually, that was only number four. So Trinidad oh. was my next one. Oh, my bad, my uh, bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that's number five. Trinidad was my next one. I mean, you know, again, I mean, there you've talked about them. Uh, I've had limited access to their sticks. Um, I do have some coming, uh, but yeah, this this uh, uh, Cuban uh, cigars, you know, you know, with the signature pigtails. I mean, they, I've heard nothing but great things, and mm. I. And from what I understand, they're just going to start releasing limited things throughout uh, the next few years. And so I'm excited to see what they what they have to offer in the future. Uh, the My last one, number six, is Supreme Leaf from, uh, and I can't really, I can never see this name. Agonosa. Agonosa. Okay. So Agonosa was another one. And again, I just actually got into this brand probably in the last eight months. Uh, so, you know, it, it's kind of... Uh, uh, an adventure with them, so I'm going through an adventure with them, and it seems like they'll they'll be uh, they'll be bringing some new stuff out. Uh, they have some early launch stuff coming out at Tobacco Plus uh, Expo uh, early this coming up year. I think that's in February. Is that right? Mm-hmm. TPE yeah. or TP, T, TPE? Yeah. I don't so, track all the cons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, it's it, it, so, it's a blur. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to 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 take that uh, journey with them too. And again, another Nicaraguan uh, Corojo, uh, you know, uh, uh, stick uh, and uh, Edward Fernandez, Eduardo Fernandez. Uh, you know, he's a he's a conglomerate there in uh, Nicaragua, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think you have a solid list here. Um, yeah. Lafora Dominicana is interesting. 
I historically have never gone into the brand because of distribution here in the Northeast. However, yep. I am told it's getting better and it's fixed yeah. and it's awesome. So, yeah. um, congratulations to that uh, and 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 to them for making your your top five uh, on the lookout. You know, for me it was yeah. a double whammy. The rep tried yeah. to educate the local rep here tried to educate me on cigars. Um, he's like, well, you don't understand how the industry works, All right? So picture this, Drew. This is a great story. Do actually, do I have time for this story? It's four minutes. Johnny, do I have time for this story? All right, good. See, I, I love when Johnny's hungover because then I can go, <laughs> I can go over on time, right? <laughs> I go on time. Nah, let me tell you this story because, and and, and again, the fourth Dominicana need, needs to know like what's on their road, right? So the Northeast rep comes into a cigar shop and he sits down next to me and he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, good. You know what I mean? And we're talking. He's like, you know, he's like, oh, have you tried the da 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 da? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I'm like, I like it, but problem is you can never get it, uh, you know, because if the cigar shops order it in March, you get it by uh, September. And to me, from a business perspective, that's unacceptable. He's like, whoa, 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 right? This is like 23-year-old kid. And I'm like, okay, now he's going whoa, 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 whoa to Joe, 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 Joe. So my friends are sitting here like, dude, this kid's about to get fucking roasted, right? So he starts talking. He starts talking. And he's like, well, let me tell you how the industry works. I'm like, T please do. Please tell me how the cigar industry works. He's like, well, the cigar shops order from the cigar shop, and then when it comes by, and if the tobacco's not ready, and blah, 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 I'm like, well, really? How come you have no problems in California? I was, it's distribution. I didn't say your cigar sucked. I said your distribution sucks here in the Northeast. That was it. He starts going on and on and on. So I actually went on a little personal boycott because he tried to, like, he tried to, like, do that. And then he complains to the cigar shop owner about me, which is a common occurrence. <laughs> Apparently, uh, whenever I enter a cigar shop, right? Because, you know, they, people don't want to hear the truth. They want me to, you know, they ask me my opinion. Like, it's not like I went up to him and said, hey, man, you're the rep from that company. Tell me about why your distribution sucks. I didn't say that. I was sitting down yeah. minding my own business with my friends. Long story painless. He complained to the cigar shop owner, and the cigar shop goes, yeah, you, you probably shouldn't have gotten into an argument with him about the industry. And I said, kid, how long have you been in the industry? He's like, well, I've been in the industry three years. I'm like, cool. I'm like, that's good. He goes, how long have you been in the industry? I says, I I'm not, I don't know anything about cigars. You, you were right. And that was it. And that, and that yeah. was totally it. And and then, you know, that, I just let him, I, I let him have it. But, uh, yeah. you know, I just let him walk away and feeling all proud. And I was just like, yeah, it's just, just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> but, but, but it is getting better. And, um, uh oh, getting back that La Volcada. I'm really digging that in the in the Lenox. But the Lenox. La Vol the La Volcada never made the list as well. As we're yeah. going through our um Yeah. So uh there you go. Uh Alec and Bradley, I am super excited about this. I am super excited about uh Alan's kids from Alec Bradley to get into the industry. Jonathan promised us an interview. I'm ex right. super excited to get them uh, here. Want to hear their perspective because you have a younger generation perspective um, yes. as to where they're going. I know the conversation is going to go to uh, marketing on that one, right? Because yeah. it's just you know you got a position and you got you. They're in a unique position, right? You know their names are Alec and Bradley. Their father's Alan, and the name of the father's company is Alec Bradley, right? I think it's super cool, but you're going to have some branding recognition components that are going to go there. And the people who are either a fan of Alec Bradley or not a fan or on each side of the spectrum, they're going to have some, some, some toggling in between, and they're going to have to really create sticks that really stick out to fight that yeah. brand identity. You know what I mean? It's just, oh, yeah. it, it's just, it just it is what it is, right? Because we all know who Alec and Bradley uh, – I'm sorry, who Alec Bradley is um, – uh, some some might crisscross the name, and and yeah. think it's one and the same. You know what I mean? And 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 there you go. So that's going to be super interesting. I'm really glad you 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 brought that up. Uh, Steve yeah. Saka, complete fan. Like his stuff is uh, out of the park. 
You know, yeah. absolutely think it's awesome. Southern Draw, I've said this on the show to, to review your stuff. Southern Draw, when they came out with their first call line, I was like, okay, cool. What I like about Southern Draw is they had a great year and produced yeah. some super cool stuff this year that if this was the baseline of their first stuff, the second yeah. stuff is really above here, and they're showing a lot of progression. Oh, yeah. Similar to the discussion that I'm about to have with 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 my top five, I I wouldn't put them in my top five, but they would definitely be in my top seven for sure. Yeah. Um. You know. So that's super cool. Um. Trinidad, I get a little bit excited about that brand. You know what I mean? I don't know uh, why. So I I agree with you on that. I've smoked some some good stuff with them. And Aganosa, I just can't wait till they start coming over here, uh, towards the northeast or. They're going to make me go online because you're not the only one that I've spoken to, um, obviously outside of Story Geeks, who has mentioned, like, those sticks and whatnot. So, um, solid list, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to. Def- I'll have to knock on their front door and let them know that they're not well presented, represented in the uh, Northeast. Yeah, we can find We can yeah. find them a broker here in the Northeast. Yeah. There's plenty of them, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. My friend, friendly note. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um. My top five, and then we'll just do uh, p- predictions right quick. Um, my top five. My number five, for the same reason as the Southern Draw, is Kristoff. I think Kristoff this year has had an amazing year with the JT series. Mm-hmm. And I was at the Queensbury 25th anniversary, and their uh, QCP Two five stick, which is made exclusively for them, uh, and for their event, the 25th anniversary. I am excited about where the JT series came from. Uh, not only uh, full disclosure, we knew the JT since he was a he he was he was a, 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 a whippersnapper, right? Yeah, yeah, we knew him in high school, right? So we go back and. Also, just hearing his story about how uh, Jared had the opportunity to uh, become Christoph's first in-house sales rep and how that company has progressed. Um, when I started Cigar Club Radio, uh, Jared and I did some, some promos together and stuff like that. He came out with a super cool idea that we did uh, on uh, AM Radio. It was actually uh, four rounds with Christoph. Uh, so we did this, I think it was for 10 weeks in a row. Uh, we, we scored it like a boxing scorecard. So uh, your first round was constru- – uh, Jared came up with the categories. It went super well. It was a great promo. Compared Christoph to other sticks, it went, it went well. Um, you know, and then when I had, finally had the opportunity to smoke the JT series, um, I still chase them because next door actually knows how much I like them. They actually limit me from 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 purchasing them. They taunt me, uh, but 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 I do let them taunt me. So super excited about Kristoff uh, and seeing what what they uh, come up with here in uh, 2020. Um, Crowned Heads is my number four. Mm. So my so I'm going backwards, right? So yeah. Crowned Heads is my number four. I am a fan of Crowned Heads. I I. Absolutely, positively enjoy their sticks. I enjoy the brand. I'm excited to. Uh, they've been kind of a little silent here in uh, what year are we in? 2019, right? Yeah. Uh, they've yeah. been a little silent. 2019. I feel they're gonna come up with 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 something super cool in uh, 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you a question. Sure. Hey, did you did you try my uh, my this morning? I posted the uh, Stogie of the morning. Have you tried that La, La Closion uh, with Drew Estate? I, I didn't see a post this morning. I, I, we had yeah, a long a, day. Hold on, Drew. It's a crown head. Is this out of left Drew field? Estate. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is, is there a point to this? Oh, you just, you're just curious. No, no. no All right, hold on. I'm no. looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, so it's a, it's a collab uh, with uh, uh, Huber. Mm-hmm. Is that right? I pronounced his name right? Yeah. And uh, the guys over at Drew Estate. No. So, yeah. No, what's the deal with this? It might be next door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, on, yeah, let me let me check it out. The next door knows I'm not a Drew uh, I'm not a hardcore Drew fan. It's just, right. you know what I mean? Um 
So they wouldn't tell me if it came in or not, but I will seek it out while you had it. Yeah, yeah, I've had it. It's a great stick. I mean, definitely try it. Uh, try it out. I mean, that's uh, Crown Heads and, like I said, Drew Estate uh, collaboration. Uh, great stick. I think you'll enjoy that. So right, give, yeah. that try. Give, give that a whirl. Yeah, yeah. Give me some feedback on that on the show next next time. <laughs> yeah, next door. Next door gives me like, hey, this is new. This is this is here. But like I said, if it's if it's if it's from them, they 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 probably wouldn't just mention it uh, for just. It just they kind of know my palate from being here. Sure, uh, sure. Plus, I'm a little vocal, but yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll, I'll seek that out for sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, number three, I, I, CLE cigars. Okay, mm. Winwood Hills Mayhem came out this year, and I am excited. I was super excited about this. They sent some to Story Geeks. I've seeked some out. Um, I think marketing and positioning, I think what killed them was the uh, going exclusively on that name uh, yeah. because it was a former name. Uh, however, um, and also the 50-count boxes, kind of like the Alandinos, right? They came out, I don't know, 18 months ago, and now they're starting to catch up from that, right? From there. But when you got 50 count boxes and cigar shop owners might not want to put it in there because it's two box on the shelf and blah, blah, blah. And they don't like to get creative. So, right. you know, um, which will lead me to my rants because I promise Johnny I will not hold back with my 2020 predictions. He has been eagerly waiting, which is why he's allowing us a little bit more time. Uh, he's like, he's getting ready. He's a, right? <laughs> um, you know, but, 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 but the Winwood Hills mayhem, right? I was yeah. I, and and when this came out, I was like, "All right, Christian, here we go. We're gonna make a move. We're gonna make a move." And it's been kind of flat for them, right? And it's been kind of flat, like with with some chatter and whatnot. So I think CLE is is gonna come back because having interviewed Christian and right. speaking to him offline, he's not one to sit in the background at all. <laughs> but he could be he could be busy because his kid is keeping him busy with baseball. His kids his kids could play like professional ball so it could be it could be busy with, with, with that but uh other than other than that i think cle is is going to be doing some super cool stuff you could include asylum with that but that yeah. would be to me as a stogie geek host that would be too much of a layup like a layup to predict to predict something because yeah. asylum has done historically well year after oh, yeah. year year after year. So for me to say, oh yeah, no problem, they're gonna call someone to sign. I think that would just be a layup. I don't like to do that. I like to name some of the companies that I really think that if they're listening, they should freaking say, okay, that kid gets it. That guy on that podcast doesn't. He doesn't. But that kid gets it because he knows he he gets it. And yeah. I think that. We 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 will be seeing some super cool stuff happening from uh, CLE Cigars. That was my number three. Number two, <sighs> we can't go through a Story Geek episode without me using it in a word. So it's Tatuaje. Absolutely, <laughs> like you know, that's like the Joe Zempa layup. Like I I just I cannot ex I, I have to use it in a sentence every episode. Um, yeah. So number two is Tatuaje. What can I say? I believe they came up with off the top of my head twelve to thirteen new sticks this year. Yeah. Um, I've definitely had at least eight of them. Um, awesome, uh, awesome sticks uh, there. And if anybody knows M Mr. Johnson, um, mm -hmm. come on down. I would love a chance to talk to you. Uh, I, I would probably totally like geek out as well. Because I'm like, bro, I've been talking about you since you, it's for years, you know what I mean? And it's a funny thing because when I reviewed my top five year after year, it never went away. It never went right. away. And that being said, my number one has to be Black Label uh, and the Black Label Works Studio for sure. Um, yeah. I cannot tell you uh, how, and again, it's the same um, the the Black Label Trading Company and the Black Work Studio, it's the same story as when we get into a, and again, I'm not comparing the sticks, but a Southern Draw, a Crystal. It, it's progression, progression, yeah. progression, progress, like building. And, and, and I'm ultra surprised that 
they don't really play in some of the top 25s of of the cigar aficionado. Probably politics, I'm sure <laughs> of that. But again, like such a fan of the brand and the Blackwork Studio stuff is the artwork on like the the artwork of the cigar, the construction of the cigar. You got your 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 green your green hornet and and it just it's it's just so good. Uh, your Emilio is good. Your uh, the, the stuff they first came out with is uh, like I said, it had a baseline and then it got better. And then they came out with some more sticks over the year and and, and it got better. And then they came out with more sticks of the year and it gets better and it gets piled up. So uh, that's my top five. And black uh, black work, blah, 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 I combined the two. Black label has been um, top for um, for uh, the t- the two years I've been on this show. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna say uh, real quick that the dissident label is strong here in Texas. Mm. So, so yeah, it's 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 and you can walk into pretty much any brick and mortar here, uh, and you find uh, uh, dissident there, yep. well represented. Yep. And uh, obviously there, there there's something there because uh, every time I go back there, there there's some new expanded line from dissident. Yep, and uh, then to that. If I were to do six like you did six, yeah, I would have to. And the only reason why I didn't include this in my top five, uh, even though if I were to position them in front of some of the brands I mentioned, it would be up there, is because I think it's just a layup company. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of those layup companies to say, it'd be Davidoff. I mean, yeah. they come up with stuff every year. That, that just completely amazes me. And I think that company does everything right. And they come up with some super cool stuff that I enjoy throughout the year. But I didn't want to go. I wanted to go with more of the companies that I think that, you know, are not at that status, if that makes Mm. sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, if I were to say, oh, yeah, Davidoff's going to come out with some new stuff this year. Duh. Like, (laughs) you know. (laughs) So, um is, so if well, I were to do top six, they, there you go. Yeah, Davidoff too. I mean, because they got that. What well, they have Zeno as well, right? Yeah. Their, yep. Yeah, it's a Zeno series. So yeah, which I've had. Uh, I think it's Taste of Stack, Texas, State of Texas, Taste of Stack. Mm-hmm. Amazing stick. Oh, yeah. Amazing stick, and you know, as you say, everything's awesome in Texas. So if you throw yes. Texas in the name of your stick, you're, you're guaranteed for there it to go. be good. <laughs> there you go. All righty. All right, Drew. Football teams. This is officially the last thought concept for Stogie Geeks 2019. It is our 2020 predictions. Hmm. I have a funny feeling we could probably go for 20 minutes on this one. I'm going to ask Johnny to cap us off at seven minutes right. so that we can kind of wrap it up and do that there. So, Johnny, can you start us? All right, because we could just go and go, because this is going to be like a spitfire, right? All right, this is, this is going to be a spitfire, Drew. And the format I want for this show is what has pissed you off in 2019 and what you want fixed in 2020, what excited you in 2019, and what you want um, to get better. Or at least stay the same and not get worse, right? You follow me? I think so. All right. And what the yeah. hell you think is going to happen in 2020? Spitball mm. format. You go first. Oh, my goodness. Really? Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, my San Antonio didn't come in. <laughs> He's, uh, you're heartbroken. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still heartbroken about that. So, that you know, I guess that'd be the pissed off meter point. But at, what have you. Whatever. Uh, AJ Fernandez, you know, I'm a big fan of his stuff, and uh, anytime he does a collab. So, uh, as far as the uh, uh, as far as that goes, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a man that gets upset about anything that has to do with the cigars, other as far as the quality or anything like that, because uh, it ain't a bad stick until you decide it's a it's a bad stick. But uh, for the most part, the uh, FDA is probably in my top one as well. You know that 
that charade, that whole charade, dragging it on, you know, not, I mean, all the, all the facts are out there laid out for them. They know it's not part of the, uh, the OTB, uh, family. They, they should be able to dissect that and move that forward and get it done and just put it behind us and let us, uh, let all the, uh, uh, talent out there in the cigar industry do what they do best um so th- there's that uh what's the other one again what was the what's other question? what's what, what's pissed you off and what you want fixed what so you those, think yeah what you think yeah. was super cool and what you want to either stay the same or not get worse uh super cool so super cool are are, are just some of the uh to see the young generation come up like we spoke about alec and bradley to see those guys come up uh, you know, I'm 50 years old, so I, you know, uh, I, I probably relate to their dad more than, uh, than them. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the common denominator, the stick can't bring us together, uh, to the forefront really fast. Uh, so just seeing those kind of, uh, things happen, uh, and come to fruition, uh, is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, uh, I'm excited about the ambassador program that McAuliffe has uh, decided to help the industry understand that that is needed. Uh, I believe that, you know, if you get these ambassadors to come out and help educate uh, the smoker, uh, you know, the cigar uh, enthusiast, officiant out on what have you, I think that, that that's awesome uh, uh, in, in retrospect to education and things of that nature. Uh, the other thing that excites me is that, uh, you know, the, uh, well, actually, the other thing that pisses me off that's still in the back of my mind is Nice, that, you're getting angry. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this Cigar Con, the PCA, you know, all that stuff, you know. Uh, I've never been to one of those. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been on the outside of those. And I don't think you've been to one or at nah. least you haven't been to one there's in no a need while. for me. To, I'm, not, I'm not a tobacco retailer. Right, right, what right. We do interview but, people. We interview people 44 episodes a year. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, like to go to Black Smoke, things of that nature, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking, you know, those are happy things that I'm actually happy to go uh, this year. I think you and I are going to be planning a trip to go down to uh, check out uh, J.C. Newman's uh, uh, new place. Yes. Once they get called. So uh, looking forward to that. You yeah. Know? So that that's going to be awesome and fun and and just really get to meet, uh, you know, an industry giant uh, there, uh, you know, in, 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 in their new uh, their new digs uh, to con- continue on for the next, you know, millennial. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it in the wrap up. <laughs> you're, you're pretty reserved, Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pretty reserved. Yeah. <clears throat> I made a list. Okay. <laughs> Number right. one, bring back the trade show. Okay, uh, for retailers, yes. pick a name and go with it and let the retailers do their deals at the shows. Don't give a deal pre-show and expect them to waste their time and go shake your hand on stuff they could have already bought for the same price and negate right. the point of the trade show. The point of the trade show is to, to edu- for the retailers to educate themselves to show up and get potential discounts to move forward and become experts for us consumers to look up to in the field, okay? You don't give a discount, and then, oh, by the way, if you want to come over here and shake my hand and put your visa through my square, then we'll be all set. It's the same thing. They cannot show up and then do that, okay? So... Make it what it used to be. Like, like if you were a sh- player in the cigar retail space, you went to that show. And you went to that show because it produced value. And so if you're going to do a show, my rant is make it produce value. That's my theme. Number two, retailers produce value to your customers, okay? It's not a money grab. If you want to own a bar, own a bar. If you want to give liquor at your cigar shop and keep it BYOB, then keep it that way. If you want to get a liquor license and move forward and realize that you get 300% on alcohol. Whoops, let me get in the camera. 300% on alcohol and Keystone, 50% 
on the tobacco of the, the premium cigar, make a business model that supports that, mm-hmm. right? There you go. Don't become a bar that you can now smoke in because smoking is banned on every sidewalk or soon will be banned on every sidewalk and beach and, and bodega or whatever, whatever, okay? So there. Make your events retailers. Make your events interesting. Make your uh, retail shop a destination. Make me want to jump in a car and drive 45 minutes to your place. You know what I mean? Like, step up your game. Clean an ashtray <laughs> while I'm smoking, right? You have someone there clean an ashtray while I'm smoking. If you hire a bartender because you want to become a bar, make sure they know how to make drinks. Make sure they're not rude, crude, and ignorant, right? There you go. That's the retail side, all right? Tobacconist University has a phenomenal curriculum that, like, if I owned a retail shop, and you, you, in order for you to be in that humidor, you got to go through the curriculum. That's it. It's a 200-page book, 100-questionnaire essay. you got to score a 90 to get it, and you got to do that because that makes you understand two things. Number one, you're motivated for the job and you work in the humidor. Okay? Number two, makes you understand the history because not for nothing, shows like Stogie Geeks exist not only because of the listeners, it's because you want to hear the history of how Company X got started. Or you want to hear the history or the experience of one of the hosts that show up on the show and they give their opinion on that. Happy? I am so excited that the Stogie, the Stogie Geeks listeners email me throughout the, the year and email me weekly. And they, they come in. And when they come and visit or they hit me up on either social media or there, I'm very grateful for you that you listen to the show. And when I do an APB for one of my crazy things, you guys email me back with content that I do use on the show. And I really appreciate you for that. I yeah. don't want that to stop. I want that to continue. That's a extremely, it's, a, it's, just, it's such a positive aspect, right? Right. Other podcast, okay? If you don't like their stick, do not be afraid to say it, it. It's terrible. The tobacco's not ready. If I have a pain in my jaw as I'm smoking it, the tobacco is not ready. If the tobacco's not ready, then guess what? Don't launch the product. If the or maybe the person who's in charge of that stick. Take a trip down to the factory and find out why the tobacco is not ready. Because it could be a, like you said before, a sunshine issue or a plant issue or a lack of water or anything of that nature, right? Yeah. You know, the fan. The cigar cigar roller went in mad. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, the cigar roller went in angry that day, so that's why it didn't taste that well. Right, right, right. You know? And it's, it's it's just more... Uh, it's more of a customer service on everyone's end. I would like to think that when you in, when you email me and you engage me, and I can only speak for myself, I email you back and I give you my honest opinion, and I will honestly tell you and at least point you in the right direction. That's called customer service. All I want is the same when I go into a brick and mortar. Well, I want customer service, right? I don't want the angry humidor guy or gal upset and then doing that, okay? Another thing, patrons, okay? Don't smash the cigar in the ashtray. Just put it down when you're done with it. It's not a cigarette. It'll go out by itself. Brings me to my next thing. Cigarette people, get the hell out of the cigar lounge, right? Yeah. right? Oh, wait a minute. It's a bar I can smoke in. That's on the owner for that. That's on the owner for that culture, right? But again, there's more and more of that progression, and I think it's really taking away from the historic nostalgia of where we're going, right? FDA, right? FDA. I don't care what the FDA decides. I've said this in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. I don't care. Because what's going to happen, okay, they're going to pass the price on to the consumer. And guess what? We're going to pay. We're going to pay. Happens, right? You don't think it happens? 
You like to hop in your car and drive to the next state over. You need a little plastic thing on your windshield, right? Because you're getting a bill for it. Okay? Yeah. It's called an Easy Pass here in Rhode Island. I don't know what it's called in Texas. Easy Pass? Is that global? Uh, no, I think they're called that a, uh, what is that called? It's called the Palmetto uh, Pass south it's of. It's called something. I'm from not, South Carolina down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, you got the visual, right? I'm trying to create a yeah. visual here for the Stoic oh, yeah. Geeks listener who doesn't actually watch us, right? But, you, you know, you, you, the price is going to be cascaded. FDA, they're not going to know. They're not going to know. I said in 2014 with an interview with Mike Bellity, who was a sponsor of my show, it's yeah. going to be 2020, and we're not going to still know what's going to happen. And I was told, not only by Mike Bellity, but other people in the industry throughout my f- two-year tenure here, Plus my other <coughs> three-year tenure on the radio with that. Oh, no, you don't understand how it works. I understand how, I understand how it works, okay? I understand how it works. Two reasons. Number one, my first professional job was United States House of Representatives. I understand how it works in D.C. It's my first professional job. True story, okay? Yep. Number two, all right, that is how it works because if the government can make money from it, effectively, they are going to do it. And they're yes, already sir. making money off of our industry, right? What I'm excited about, can't wait to, to go to J.C. Newman's and yeah. the factory with you. First thing I'm going to tell you is thank you for sponsoring Story Geeks in 2019. Yes. You haven't came to the microphone yet. I cannot <laughs> wait to, to, to speak to them. Yeah. And J.C. Newman, again, sponsor the show, love them to death. Super cool. Right. They send us stuff. I got great swag. It's awesome, right? Yeah. Come to the microphone. And I know you're busy. It's been a crazy year for everybody. I get it. But yeah. it's like, you know, like that stuff, like, again, it, uh, to me, it all encompasses customer service. So whatever level you are in our fascinating, ever-changing, probably going to continue to grow industry, because even if they ban cigars throughout the whole United States, we're going to be able to order them on the Internet. And we're yeah. going to get them from another country. Or we're going to travel to another country. Or we're going to have a friend or an aunt who lives in another country. We're going to get them, right? Uh, right. We have police officers who can attest to you that if it's banned, the people still get their hands on it. So even oh, if it's yeah. that drastic, it's not going to ever be that drastic. Don't get me wrong. But it drives me nuts. It's like, come on now. Get here and, get and, and do customer service, right? When I have an interview or you co-host in an interview, we yeah. supply customer service, okay? Someone emails you, so you listener, someone emails yep. it's customer service. Okay, retailers, customer service. Go out there and get the latest and greatest what you think for the shop. If you have a box of Lanceros sitting there and you're a retailer, don't sit there and let it sit there. Educate your customer into Lanceros. You're not hoodwinking them into Lanceros. You're telling them the truth. Isn't that why we go to cigar shops to seek more knowledge? Definitely. It can't be to watch CNN or Fox News or ESPN. It can't be. And if it is, and if I'm off my rocker, email Drew at storygeeks.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just it's just crazy. It's it's just crazy. Oh, creators, marketing people who are are marketing for cigar companies who know uh, somewhat about marketing but might not know about cigars, smoke what you're marketing. You might have a different perspective on your marketing. Shelf talkers, get rid of them. They're annoying. We know it's a 93%, okay? They have the shelf talker hanging from the box when you walk in. You got it over there, okay? If we don't know it's 93%, Shop owners, go back to your workers and tell them it's 93% so they can customer service your customers and educate them and put them in something that had a 93 rating, not percent rating. All right? My Bloody Mary's kicking in. All right? Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's, again, it's all about customer service. And in regards to predictions, I honestly think it is now going to be 2023. And we're still not going to know exactly the extent of the FDA. True. And we won't know the proper name of the Cigar Con, or whatever it's called. <laughs> we, that, that was my prediction. We're not going to know uh, what the heck it's called. Different people are going to call it different things. And then there you go. And also, I think it's going to be 2023. 
Because the, they let's look at this logistically, okay? They're not going to make a move under this current administration. No. This administration is so messed up. Premium cigars are not on the table. All you got to do is pick up a newspaper and read what happened this week. Oh, oh wait a minute. We got to take a vote on premium cigars because we got a possible impeachment of a president. We got possible things going, tariffs going on. And on again, political, right? Right? Because, see, an educated consumer is a dangerous consumer. To our Story Geeks listeners, my wish for you, go out and seek more knowledge, right? Go out and seek more knowledge, you know? And if you smoke something that really excites you or whatever, email Drew and I. Hopefully we haven't heard about it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll share it out. And then you and I and Drew can share that experience virtually together, and we can go yeah. out We can go out and say, hey, man, I tried it. Great, you've turned me on to that stick, you know what I mean? Because we're busy in our daily lives and doing all of that stuff, and... Again, it's all about customer service. And then predictions, I really think Black Label's going to come up with some super cool shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then there you go. I, 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 the, that's what I really want to see. I think we're going to see more Nicaraguans enter. I think we're going to see companies now turning into year five of we don't know what's going to be the FDA. Put it in your business plan. I mean, yep. if you put 50 grand away... In your business plan, since since the FDA is one about the FDA, you would have been able to pay for it cash. Right. Right? So so your worries <laughs> are gone. So pl- plan your business accordingly. Plan your business accordingly because my prediction 10 years from now is we're going to walk into an American cigar shop and they're going to give us a menu. And they're going to give us a menu and we're not going to be able to walk in the humidor and some chooch is going to have to cut it for us by law. Yeah. And they're going to screw up the cut because they didn't educate the person and then they're that damn. What's going to happen? People are going to stop going to brick and mortars. Mm. You're going to see more social clubs. You're going to say, I'm going on a 10-year a ten year prediction here. But yeah, absolutely, you're going to see yeah. that. Because I don't want someone who doesn't know anything about cutting my cigars. I can go next door. One person cuts my cigar. They have 11 employees. One. That's just my experience. Drew, final yeah. thoughts for 2019, and then I'll take us out, officially out. Well, you know, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man with word economy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I, you know, I uh, just want to say to all the So Geeks listeners, it's been a, it's been a blast uh, being, uh, being with you, Joe, uh, and Paul, and Mark, Johnny, you know, and Sam, and everybody down there. So, uh, I look forward to 2020 and expanding, uh, you know, the the experience with y'all and growing. So, uh, I look forward to some of the trips that we're going to be able to take uh, once we get our passports clear. Uh, you know, renewed. Yes. <laughs> Did you get yours renewed yet? No, but I have to. <laughs> S- Samantha sent us a whole thing. I have to do anyway with the TSA because travel for yeah. Security Weekly and all that. So I that is on my between Christmas yeah. and New Year's to begin that stuff and and then do that there and get and get yeah. that done. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So. so other than that, other than that, just uh, enjoying uh, you know social media with a lot of our our our, our viewers and. Uh, uh, love the response uh, for the Stogies, you know, the morning Stogies. I've uh, been doing that. Uh, it's already going on two and a half months. Yeah. And so, yeah, the content there has been well received, get a lot of uh, feedback, uh, likes, and things of that nature. So that's fun. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be expanding that a little bit more, make it more interesting. Uh, I don't like it to get stale. I like to keep things exciting. And... Uh, Instead of waking up at four o'clock in the morning and have a stogie, we'll get up at two o'clock. And because uh, you want to provide customer service, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So other than that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much you know my my thought. The yeah. End of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I I've I have so much to say. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Paul Azadorian for the opportunity for me to be host of of Stogie Geeks. I want to thank Paul Azadorian for. Uh, uh, Drew coming on as well. I want to thank Drew for flashing me an email on the original yeah. email and you coming on Story Geeks. It's been awesome. You've been here since October 
and we got a lot of super cool stuff planned for 2020. Yeah. So I do want to thank Paul uh, for for the opportunity. Um, it's I want to thank the Stogie Geeks listeners who have been hearing me rant since January 2nd of 2017. I'm looking forward <laughs> to entering my third year. I want to thank Samantha for putting up with me for the first year of Stogie Geeks of me not realizing how busy she really is with everything here at Security Weekly. And then it's funny, Drew, because um, long story painless, uh, when I first started Stogie Geeks, I touched base with Samantha emails, calls, as much as you do with me. And when yeah. you're in the security weekly field, you're like, oh, my God, Drew. Oh, and like, you know what I mean? I love it coming, but, you know, it's a, it's like, okay, I got to call him. I got to call him. And I call you back, like, what, late night because we're busy yeah. and all of that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I do want to say uh, thank you for Samantha for coordinating all of this stuff. She's our director of operations here for all of the shows that happen here at G-Unit Studios. I want to thank the listeners. I want to thank our production crew for putting stuff together at the last minute. Usually with me, it's always I want to thank Johnny and Mark for always being there for yeah. me. And even today, they put me on this set, which wasn't yesterday's set, from a 13-and-a-half-hour segment long and doing that there. And they always come in and hook up stuff done so that yeah. it, we, we wouldn't exist without them driving the bus uh, there. Although I made the bus driver very late today. Uh, but, again, I want to thank Johnny and Mark and Samantha. I want to thank Paul. Um, I want to thank you, Drew, for uh, taking a chance and coming on. With, with a loudmouth Italian kid who yeah. is not afraid to uh, give his opinion. And like I said, uh, uh, the listeners, we, we really wouldn't exist without you. I want to say a special thanks to J.C. Newman uh, for coming on, uh, for Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, McAuliffe Cigars coming on there too. And it's just it's been super cool. And I'm, I'm so excited about 2020. Johnny had an idea of putting us together. They got to logistically figure this out because if there's Wi-Fi or not and whatnot yeah. of us doing a filming in the tobacco field. Uh, yeah. So that's coming up with an educational component uh, there. Uh, I want I want to just just thank the, everybody in the whole crew for everything that has happened. And I want to wish you, Story Geeks listener, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year uh, for that there too. So, you know. And Drew, ha ha Merry Christmas to your family. But I'll talk to you before Christmas for sure. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. So, yeah. So, Drew, you have any last comments? Because we're going to wrap this up. No, just uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, happy holidays to everybody uh, who's out there listening to us. And uh, continue uh, uh, emailing and, like I said, being part of the social media family. Uh, so, yeah, just keep it coming. And uh, have a safe and, uh, you know, prosperous New Year coming up. And uh, We'll see you guys next year. Yeah, man. I want to remind you guys, behind every cigar is a story worth knowing. Get out there to your local brick and mortar and tell them. Joe Hosepa from Story Geek says you are going to supply me with excellent customer service today. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. We will see you in 2020. Story Geeks, over and out. <laughs>